In this tutorial, we'll build an HTML email signature. So here you can see it in Gmail on my computer on the left, then a screenshot of it in dark mode on my phone on the right. So at the bottom of the email signature, we're gonna have social media icons, which you can link to your social media pages. We'll have a website link, a telephone link, an email link, then your title, name, and the opportunity to add a headshot or a photo. So I'm gonna move out of Gmail and over to the completed version that you see here. And even though there are a lot of different email services where you can add an email signature, towards the end of the video, I'll show you how to add the signature to Gmail. For this tutorial, in the video description, I'm gonna have a download link for some starter files, which will include all of the images that we use, as well as the index.html file. So here you can see all of the icons as well as the profile image. And this email template is gonna show up across all testable email clients. So the template comes from a bonus from my HTML email mastery course where I teach HTML email, so how to build templates, but I included this signature in there as a bonus. The signature that we build in this tutorial is gonna be a little different than the signature as the bonus, which is more complex. The main difference is that the little icons that appear next to the email, phone, and website address aren't going to align perfectly in all email clients with this version that we build because we're not gonna have as advanced of table layering for the HTML email signature. But in my course, it's a little more complex, the bonus that's included as the email signature so it aligns better with more table layering. So feel free to check out the course in the HTML file that I've included in the starter files download to promote the course. You can also go to the course page to check out the course curriculum. So I'm gonna open up index.html in Visual Studio Code, or actually this entire starter files folder into the Visual Studio Code workspace. And if this is new to you using an HTML text editor or just a text editor in general, you can check out my channel for a lesson on Visual Studio Code. You can use any text editor you want, but I'm gonna be working out of this one. And as we can see on the left, we have all of the images inside of the image folder. And I'm gonna be using the live server extension in Visual Studio Code so we can see it live in the web browser as we're building it. You don't have to use this, but it makes development a lot easier when you don't have to refresh the web browser in order to see the changes you're making in your text editor. And I'm gonna add a heading here under profile image just to make sure that we're connected to Visual Studio Code before we go over what I've included for us in this starter index.html file. So let me scroll up to the top so we can quickly go over what's included here. So we have our HTML5 document type at the very top along with basically the standard HTML5 boilerplate with the character set, Internet Explorer compatibility, device with initial scale one for mobile devices, a title, which we don't really need here, but I thought we'd include it anyways. We're not gonna see that title when we send or include an email signature in our emails. I'll also briefly mention that this email boilerplate or HTML5 boilerplate for email is very basic and basically for the web. So in my HTML email mastery course, we spend an hour and a half on the boilerplate to make sure that our emails render properly across all email clients when building HTML emails. Also included, I have a Google font here in the internal style sheet for the font family called Leto, which is what we're seeing with this font styling in the signature. So that comes from fonts.google.com. So moving over to the HTML I have, we're gonna use the center tag, which is an HTML4 tag, but we're gonna use that for demonstration purposes to center the email signature within a email template layout. Then I also have the table started for us with the class main and a width of 100%, which is the white we're seeing in Google Chrome inside of sort of the light brown shade. To make it easier on us, I also have HTML comments separating the different sections of the signature so we can look through it pretty easily once we have all of our HTML added. 
So we're going to start off by styling the wrapper and main classes, which I have started for us in the internal style sheet underneath some CSS resets to get rid of any inherent spacing, starting with the body where I have margin zero, border spacing zero to all table tags, padding zero to table data tags, and border zero to images to make sure that email clients don't add any unwanted borders to our images. So now let's start styling the wrapper class. So this is going to span the entire width of the browser or where it's seen in your email with width 100%. And in order for the table with the class main to be contained inside of this wrapper class, we're going to use table layout fixed. Then we can add the background color, which we saw outside of the 600 pixel width, which has the hex value DAD. 4CB. So now we're able to see that shade behind the hello text. And let's add a width of 100% for the main table. That way it's 100% of the width on mobile devices, but we're going to give it a max width of 600 pixels, which is the width that we are seeing in my browser here in Chrome. So max width 600 pixels. So if we take a look at the finished version, if I size the window down and try to scroll back and forth, nothing's going to happen because it's set to 100% of the width, even though we're underneath 600 pixels. Then I'm also going to set a background color of white with all Fs as the hex value. And for the font family, I'll add the Google font with the Lato style inside of single quotes. Then after that, we can add sans serif as a fallback font. We can also include the extended fallback version of sans serif with Arial Helvetica sans serif, and we can set a text color. So I'll add color, then the hex value 282828, which is a dark gray shade, or just slightly lighter than plain black. It may be tough to see the difference here on the video though. For presentation purposes of the email signature, we can also include box shadow to the HTML email template layout. So I'll add box shadow to give it sort of the slight shadow we're seeing right outside of the white. So I'll add zero for the horizontal, zero vertical, then a 25 pixel spread, red, green, blue, alpha, and we'll use all black. So that's going to be zero for red, green, and blue instead of white, which would be all Fs. Then I'll add 0.15 for a 15% transparency, which is nice and subtle. And we have the option to align our text. So I'm going to add text align left, even though that's the default. So you may ask, why haven't we seen any changes around the hello text, even though we have this heading one? So the reason is because we're inside of a table. So we'll need to add table rows and table data cells. So we're going to start off each one of these sections with a TR and TD tag. So TR for table row, then TD for table data. So now if we add that same heading back, we should be able to see all of the styling that we added. So we're able to see the Lato font family, we're able to see the box shadow, and the 600 pixel layout with the white background. So if we had a bunch of content, it would start to look like an email template or basically the finished version in height of our email signature. Now we're ready to start filling out our HTML for the different sections of our HTML email signature, starting with the profile image, where we'll include some padding around the image on the top, left, and bottom. So let's leave our table row and table data tag the same, then add some style to the TD tag with padding up 20 pixels top, zero right, eight pixels bottom, and 10 pixels left. So now for the profile image, let's add our IMG or image tag inside of the table data tag. Then for the source, we're gonna go into the image folder and it's gonna be profile-image.jpg. So I'll X out of this and close explore. And it's gonna be IMG forward slash profile-image jpg. Then for the alternative text, you can add your name or whatever you want for the profile image in case there's a problem with it displaying. That's the text that we're going to see. So if I were to mess up the image link and just 
take something away, there's the Harry Christmas text showing as the alternative text. Then we're going to need to set the width using the width attribute for certain email clients. And I'll give it a width of 150 for 150 pixels. And we'll also include some inline styling. So I'm going to add display block so there's a line break after the image and it takes up its own line so we don't have text appearing next to it. Then outline none so email clients don't add a border or outline around the image. As well as border zero which I believe we included up here but that's fine we can also include it in line. Then to round the corners of the image, let's add border radius 5 pixels. So now we should be matching the original down to the profile image. So if I go back, there we have it matching up. So let's move on to the Harry Christmas text that appears underneath it. So we'll drop down to the next HTML comment where it says name and start it off like the previous section with a table row and table data tag. Then for the table data tag, we're going to add some styling with font size, so I'll make it 22 pixels. And I'm also going to give it a larger line height, just slightly with 24 pixels. And we'll have bold font with the font weight 700. Then I'm going to add some padding to the top and the left. So for the padding top, I'll just add 5 pixels. Then 0 right, 0 bottom and 12 pixels on the left, so we'll have it slightly more left than the profile image. Then text align left we can add, even though, it, as I mentioned previously, that's the default value. And you can add your name. So Harry Christmas. And looks like I missed the font weight. So with the name now matching up, as we'll find to the original, we can add the title where it says email developer. So we'll add some additional styling to give it the spacing that we're seeing at a lighter font weight. But let's start once again with our table row, then the table data tag. And I'm going to give this its style with font size of 16 pixels. We'll make the line height slightly taller again than the pixel size at line height 18 pixels. Then for the font weight, you can change this. I'm going to leave it at 400, which is the regular or normal font weight. Then text transform uppercase to make the text all uppercase characters. So let me paste in the text. And actually, I'm going to add it in lowercase, just so you can see the effect if you're new to HTML and CSS. Let me just delete this really quickly and I'll type it out so we don't have it in uppercase characters. So email developer, then text transform uppercase. And I'm also going to add that spacing between the characters with letter spacing two pixels. So now let's add some separation with the padding. So I'll once again add padding to the top and the left. So I'll add 10 pixels on top to separate it from the name. 0 right, 0 bottom, and 12 pixels left to match up with the name text. And text align left once again. So now if we scroll or select the finished version, we have it matching up down to that title. So let's move on to the email. So we're going to add an additional layer to the table row and table data tag here. So we'll have TRTD, we'll have the style attribute. So we can add some padding, then a table inside of this as well with the width attribute. We'll leave the padding at zero for this first table data tag. Then the table will have a width of 100% to take up the full amount of space inside of the TD tag. And inside of this table, we'll have a new set of table row and table data tags, similar to how we started off these previous sections. So having this additional layer of table row, table data, and table tags before we get to the TR and TD inside will give us better control of the spacing around the email icon and the email address, which will be inline elements. So let's start off this inner section with the table row, table data tag, and the style attribute. Then I'm going to give the TD tag some padding of 8 pixels top, 0 right, 0 bottom, and 10 pixels left, which is going to match up with the profile image. 
So now we're ready to add the email icon and we're going to have that inside of a link as well as the email address. So they both act as links which will prompt the sending of an email to the address that we add. So instead of having a traditional website link, we're going to have a mail to link to prompt the sending of an email. So mail to colon, then the email address where you want it to send to. So for example, if I were to click the link on my Mac computer, it's going to prompt Apple Mail to open up and start the draft of an email to that address. Now we're ready for the image. So let's add the image tag. Then the source will be img forward slash mail dot png. For the alternative text, you can add text such as email me or you can leave it blank, but it's best to have something just in case the icon doesn't display. Then I'm also going to add the width attribute. So we can give it a width of 22 pixels and we'll add border zero for our style. Once again, to make sure that email clients don't add a border to it. So you can adjust the sizing if you want, but this is going to make it match up next to the text the best we can, which we're going to add now underneath the HTML for the email icon, where it says harry at website.com. So let's start off a new link to do that, and it's going to be the same mail to link. So you can copy this and just paste it in or start off a new link fresh. I'll just paste it in. And inside of this, we'll have text, including the email address instead of the image. For the styling, let's get rid of the underline that comes with links inherently, as we see. And we'll get rid of the blue shade. So let's add text decoration none to get rid of the underline. And for the color, I'm going to make it that. 282828 hex value we used previously, which is the off black shade. And for font size, I'll just include 16 pixels, but you can change this if you wish. So, with that, that completes the email section. I'm seeing a small line before the H in Harry, so we'll come back to that. But moving on to the phone section. All of the HTML is going to be pretty much the same as the email section, with the exception of the links, the text, and the images. So we can just copy this table row to table row for the email. Just make sure you get that starting to end table row. Then paste it in for the phone, and I'll need to correct the spacing with undo or command Z. And after pasting it, I'm seeing that same line before the H in Harry. So let's figure out how to get rid of that. So sometimes in email and working with tables, if we have spaces, they're recognized in tables while they aren't normally in regular HTML. So what I'm going to do is just remove the space here in between the link and the image tag. So there aren't any spaces between the opening and closing tags. And that removed the underline. So let's just do the same with the phone section. And that removed it for the second one as well. Now we're ready to make our changes to have it matching the phone section. Instead of using the mail to email link, we're going to use a tell or telephone link. So instead of mail to, it's going to be T E L colon. So TEL colon, then we can add the phone number and we don't have to include the dashes. I'm just going to include that here to match the finished version though. It's 1-800-888 and all eights for the last four. And then we can paste this in for the second link as well, replacing the mail link. Don't forget to replace the text that we see with the phone number. And I'll also change the alternative text to say call me. We can leave the width the same. I'll just change this to phone.png. So now if we take a look, there we have the phone section looking just like the original. So let's move on to the website link now. And that's going to be similar to this as I mentioned. So we can just copy this HTML, paste it beneath, undo or command Z, 
change the alternative text to website or your website name, then phone.png to globe.png. For the link, we'll include just a standard website link with https website.com. We can include that for the text link as well. And in here, I'll just have it as www.website.com instead of the HTTP. So now let's compare our version to the finished version. And it looks good except for the spacing is slightly different. So I'm going to reduce the padding above the website from 8 pixels to 5 pixels. So now if we go back and forth, we have it matching perfectly and we're ready to move on to the social media icons. So let's move down underneath the social media HTML comment and we're going to start a new set of TR, TD, and table tags like we did with the previous sections. So table row, table data tag, the style attribute, then the table inside of that with the width attribute. I'll add padding 0 and width 100% for the table. Then we can add some separation and add the inner table row and table data tags, which will have the style attribute. And I'm going to add padding of 14 pixels all around. Our social icons are going to act as links similar to the other images that we added for the globe as an example right here. So we'll have the anchor tag with the image inside of it. So let's start that off with A, the href attribute, which we don't have to add here, but I'll include it. Then the image inside of it after the right angle bracket with the attributes source, alt for alternative text, width, and style. Then hit enter. And I'm going to leave the link blank here, but you can always link it to your social media page, so at linkedin.com as an example. So again, the hashtag to leave the link blank. For the image, that's going to be img forward slash linkedin.png. You can include the alternative text as LinkedIn. The width, we're going to give all of these a width of 30 pixels. So there we have the finished version, and you can see the original size here. Then for the style, we'll include border 0. So all of the HTML for these is going to be the same except for the image address and the alternative text. So we can just paste this in and change what we need to. So let's make the second one Twitter or Twitter X, as we saw there. So Twitter X, then I'll just add Twitter. And for the third, we'll have YouTube. Change the alternative text. The fourth, we'll have Facebook, then Instagram. So Facebook.png. And the last as Instagram. So Instagram, then Instagram.png as the file name for the image. Okay, so there we have all of our social media icons added. Each one of those you can have linking to your social pages. But there's one additional step which I mentioned early on in the video in order to see the images show up in your email inbox, which is having the images uploaded to the web so you can include live links instead of the local links from the image folder. So let me show you some free resources so you can add these images to the web and you can get direct links to include in your HTML. So the first is imgbb.com which is a free image hosting service where you can get a direct link once you upload it to your free account. You can also get a free email service provider account from a service like MailChimp where you can add your content or image content to the account and get a direct link. Or for those of you who are familiar with GitHub, you can always add your images there and get a direct link. So all three of these methods I go over in great detail inside of my HTML email mastery course. 
whether you're building HTML email templates or signatures, you're going to have to have the images online once again for them to show up in the inbox. And lastly, before adding the HTML to a signature or for an email template, it's best to inline our HTML when we lay it out like we have here in the tutorial. In my email course, we don't need to inline it because we already include all of our CSS inline in the HTML. For our HTML here, we have a few lines in the internal style sheet that aren't included in line. So we can use a free CSS inliner like MailChimp just do a Google search for MailChimp CSS inliner. And you can also test the sending of your email signatures like you would an email template at a free website called putsmail.com. So after you create a free account here in Putsmail, scroll down where you can add the email addresses you want to send tests to. You can also add a subject line, then paste in all of your HTML. So they have an option to inline the HTML for us, which you can do, or you can use that inliner that I showed you with MailChimp, then select I'm not a robot, and send the email. So that's what I use to see this here in Gmail. But you may notice that we're not seeing the light brown background color as well as the border shadow that was added when we built it in Chrome. So we have the background, as I mentioned, the border shadow, and the 600 pixel width. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of those for adding your email signature to email services like Gmail. So I'm going to remove that background color with the light brown shade or tan shade that I'm also going to remove max width 600 pixels so we can have the signature pushed off to the left and lastly I'm going to remove the box shadow so now we have the simplified version of our HTML email signature without the display of the sort of template layout so for the rest of this tutorial I'm going to go into how to add your email signature to Gmail but if you don't need to know how to add it to Gmail, let me thank you for watching. Remember to like the video, subscribe, and check out my HTML email mastery course linked with the tutorial starter files. So let's get set up in Gmail so we can add the signature. So go up to the gear icon for the settings, then select see all settings. And staying inside of the general tab, which that will open, we can scroll down to where it says create new for an email signature and we can name it whatever we want it doesn't really matter no one else will see the name for it but us so once you've done that scroll down to find where you can select the email address you want the email signature to be attached to so you can select your domain name email address and make sure you select new so the email signature is added when you compose a new email now we're ready to paste in our html email content so let's go back over to the page here in safari in my case where i have it open and i'm just going to drag across all of the content to make sure it's all highlighted and i'll copy it with command c then once you have it copied we can go back over and paste it into gmail also, I forgot to mention we have this beneath the for new email use insert signature before quoted text in replies option. So without this checked, we should have two dashes that will appear and separate our signature from the body of our email. In this example, though, I'm going to leave it checked so we can go straight into seeing our email signature in the email body. Then the last step is just to select save changes. So once we have it saved, we can put it to the test by composing a new email. So there we have the email signature displaying attached to the domain name email. And I'll send a test email to my other Gmail account just to show that it works properly for us. And I can also show you the dark mode version from my cell phone. And here we have it displaying in both the desktop version of Gmail and the Gmail app on my iPhone in dark mode.